I'm the one that did the blind playthrough of the Nebulous Fleet Command tutorial. And at the end of that, I commented that I might be making some more videos at a later date, once I felt I had more of a handle on the game. I'm there, and I figured that since a lot of what I've been doing is playing around the fleet designer, that that should be the topic I cover. However, I don't want to talk about how to use it. I feel like there are other videos out there that do that better than I could. I know that the fleet designer looks complicated. If you dive into it on your own, it's really not that bad. If you do that, you still feel overwhelmed. There are other videos out there that are much better than anything I could make on that topic. So instead, what I wanted to do was look at mindset going into designing ships in the fleet. And these cover things that I learned in the process of getting my feet wet. Uh, at the end, I'm going to also walk through designing a single ship, and the, this is just going to be so that you can see my thought process in action. I don't necessarily think that I'm the best at it, but I do think that I've learned some lessons that would help out new players who are looking at getting into this. So why does this matter, really? Well, the thing is that this game uses a point system, and most fleets are about 3,000 points, and this is so that things can be balanced between players since it's prim predominantly a multiplayer game. Each player brings 3,000 points, and you have an equal number of players on each side, and you can be fairly certain that both sides have rough parity of equipment, provided that everyone's designed their ships fairly well. And because of this, and because of the holes, you are kind of limited in what you can bring, and that creates interesting problems that you need to overcome. And I'm going to be talking about how to think about those problems and how to overcome them, rather than uh, specifically uh, a guide on how to, like, here's how you defeat missiles, here's how you defeat big gun battleships, here's how... No, that, that, that's all well and good, but this is more of a primer on, like, things in general. So... First thing we're going to look at is the different ship classes, and I like to break these into light combatants and heavy combatants. Light combatants consist of corvettes, frigates, and destroyers, and they are typically fairly cheap. They're going to be uh, very, very difficult to detect and might be ignored in favor of other targets. Uh, however, because they're so small and easily damaged, they're probably not going to have much in the way of damage control, if anything at all. Uh, at most, it's going to be some token amount, maybe restore a system, or even just keep fires from burning the ship down entirely. But they might just have nothing. And they're going to have to be, for the most part, highly specialized. Because they're very limited in their scope and what they can bring. They don't have many slots to put stuff in. You'll notice that this Corvette here, you know, only has one empty module, a few very small Apartments, and then only four mounts for weapons or other hard points. So, uh, since we're talking about the Corvette, this is very lightly armored, but it's also very cheap. You can bring a whole bunch of these, and it's also very fast. So, Corvettes are really good for operating as part of larger groups or in support of more capable craft, and they can almost be treated like throwaway things, almost like you can bring easily 10 of these without much difficulty at all. Uh, step up from the Corvette is our frigate. It only costs a very little bit more. It has more armor, although you're probably not going to notice it all that much. But it does come with a few more modules, a few more compartments, and, an ex and I think it's actually the same number of weapon mounts. Yeah, the same number of weapon mounts, but can mount bigger things in those weapon mounts. So this is still a very specialized craft overall. It's bigger, so it has more armor and more structural integrity. But uh, as a downside to that, uh, it's also much boxier, which makes it much easier to detect than the Corvette does. It's also noticeably slower. I think it's one of the slower ships out there. And then a step up from this, we get to our uh, destroyer, which is almost... 250 points. Still not that much more. 
But this is what I would consider your first real, almost frontline combatant. It can serve as a more capable frigate if you want to, but it also has this spinal mount right here, which can be very powerful if you get it aligned uh, before revealing. Your most off is going to see them in groups, although they can also serve a limited multi-role function. This is also the smallest ship that can take your intelligence center, which means that you can even design a destroyer to be as a sort of command ship if you really want to. But the overall thing here with these lighter combatants, they're not really there to take hits. They're going to be designed with very narrow focuses in mind, like you might have something designed for air defense or for ambushing uh, a, a enemy ship in close up or for just carrying a bunch of missiles for your fleet. That, that's what these ships are really good at. Next step up, we have our heavy combatants, and these are you're going to be your light cruiser, your heavy cruiser, and the Solomon battleship. And these are more capable. They're going to probably be filling a few more roles than the lighter combatants will. But keep in mind that this is partly out of necessity because they're more expensive, so you're going to be bringing fewer ships overall, which means that they have to cover more roles on their own because they don't have the luxury of bringing as many people to cover those other jobs. They're also going to be harder to destroy, but they're easier to detect, and they're going to draw more attention. So your light cruiser, this is a your first real dedicated uh, frontline combatant that is able to bring a good mix of mobility and firepower. It can just tear apart pretty much anything smaller than it, provided it doesn't get uh, outmaneuvered or something doesn't get the drop on it. But on the flip side, it still does maintain enough weapon mounts and capability that it could potentially pose a threat to larger craft. That said, even though it's got more armor, it's not that much more than a destroyer, only eight centimeters. Uh, this doesn't sound like much, you will notice it, but if you're getting into heavy blow trading, this thing is going to probably go down fairly quickly. So this is not something that you want to have sitting there by itself, you know, slugging it out with an enemy ship if you can avoid it. That is more a job for your heavy cruiser. And your heavy cruiser, this is durable, it's powerful. You're probably only going to be able to bring one or two of them. So they're going to have to meet several needs by themselves just because they're going to be so expensive. Look, you're spending almost uh, 650 points just on the hull. But they can take a beating and keep fighting, which means that these are also a prime candidate for really good uh, damage control, because if things are taking damage and you can just keep them from hitting zero, then you can keep fighting without having to use restores. And if you have to use Restore, you can keep repairing while using your Restores. And then we get to the top end of it, which is our Solomon class battleship, which with the uh, heavy cruisers, you can probably build two. If you're really careful, you might be able to bring three in a fleet. The Solomon, you're only ever going to be bringing the one, just the whole costs a third of your point cost. It's also going to be slow, is going to be very durable, it can take a beating, and it can dish it out because it has all the hard points that you could possibly want. But it's going to be a ship that has to be able to do a bunch of jobs by itself, and it's probably going to be your only ship aside from maybe your Corvette or two, or maybe a frigate. And that's because it's got to be... It, it's going to draw a lot of attention, so it needs to be capable and able to defend itself against a multitude of threats by itself without help. And that kind of encapsulates the, the the struggle here, because you can have a really good ship, but you're only bringing the one. But it can be a really good ship. Or you can bring scads and scads of smaller ships and argue that quantity is a quality on its own. And so now 
this is kind of where we start shifting into the design principles because we have these holes that have different capabilities. We have our 3000 point cap. And really what you want to do before you even sit down and start designing your ship is you want to think, what do I want the ship to do? And then based off of what that ship's job is going to be, you then pick what hull it's going to take and what equipment you put on it. If you want to have just a spotting ship, you can probably just have yourself a Sprinter Corvette and put a really good radar on it and call it good. If you want to have something that's just going to be providing defense for against missiles, you can probably do that with a Sprinter Corvette or a frigate and call it good. If you want a ship that can trade blows with the enemy fleets and do so for a while, you're probably looking at a heavy cor uh, cruiser, if not a battleship. Maybe you can do it with a light cruiser in some cases, but you need to understand what you want and then pick what you're going to take based off of that. Uh, you, you really don't want to be taking a heavy cruiser to be doing a job that would be done much better than by something lighter than it. So keeping that in mind, there's another thing that you need to uh, keep in mind as well. There's this old adage uh, that better is the enemy of good, good enough. Finding the perfect solution to a problem that you're encountering in this game is going to be expensive and a good enough solution is one that just like is good enough to make you encounter that threat, get through it, and go on to win the game. There's this really great line from a book called Old Man's War, which effectively just expresses that every single war in history has been fought on the minimum budget that was deemed necessary to provide a chance at victory. And I really encourage you to take that mentality into designing your ships and fleets. Rather than trying to create a ship that can go and fulfill a job perfectly, design the cheapest ship that you think can possibly fulfill that goal. And maybe one of those ships only has, let's say, a 50% chance of filling that goal. But if you get it cheap enough, you can send two or three or maybe even four. And maybe one only has a 50% chance. But if you send two, that becomes a 75% chance. And if you're sending four, that's probably higher than a 90% chance. So cheap can be good. And it can make your fleet more effective because you're not losing your only way to deal with that problem if you have multiple ships that are able to address it. That said, you also want to try and find ways to solve your problem that are cheaper than the point cost to field that threat. So, a Solomon, just the whole, costs a thousand points. If you're putting all the weapons on it, you're probably looking upward 200 or 2,500 points easily with all the equipment on it. When you're looking at that, a couple, let's say three or four, size three hybrids that cost 50 points each, that's 200 points to take out a nearly 3,000 point ship. That's a really good deal. Are you defending against those 50 point type three hybrids? Well, sending three or four four point anti-missile missiles after each one of them, that looks like a really good deal because you're only spending, say, 12 or 16 points when the enemy is sending, sp spending a 50 point per missile. And you can take a lot more point defense missiles than they can take size three hybrids. Another thing to keep in mind is that uh, part of what you're paying for is your ship's armor and its structural integrity here. So like, uh, and so like, you know, a destroyer is a lot cheaper, but it's only got 22 centimeters of armor and 4,000 structural integrity. Whereas a light cruiser has eight more and also has more structural integrity. And don't be afraid to use the armor and the structural integrity. Part of what you're paying for is the ship's durability. If you paid for a really durable ship, then that durability should come into your calculations for defense because you can take the hits a little bit better. 
And if you can take a hit or two or three and keep functioning, then you don't have to avoid every single threat. You just need to be able to avoid enough that it keeps your ship from being rendered inoperable. If you can shoot down 80% of the missiles that come in at you, and the other 20% aren't enough to render your ship incapable of completing its mission, then your, air def your uh, anti-missile defense is probably good enough. And so, to close all this out, there's a final point that you should look for free ways to counter threats that you're facing that you're having trouble with. If you're having trouble with missiles, you should be aware that if you just hide behind a rock, the missiles hit a rock and they don't hit your ship, and you don't have to invest more into anti-missile defense. If you're having trouble with uh, taking a lot of damage when you're fighting with the enemy, then you can change the way you behave and only expose yourself when your rep weapons are already in range with the target in the line. So you come out, you fire a few times, then you get back behind cover. And that way you're not taking all that damage immediately. Or maybe there are just certain threats that you've realized, I do not have the points to cover that threat adequately. Maybe you don't have the ability to take out a battleship with your fleet, but you're really good at taking out the small guys. And your solution can be, I'm going to leave that problem to the other ships on my team by the other players. And that's perfectly fine. But you should probably tell your other teammates that you're doing that and tell them, hey, listen, small targets, I got it, don't worry about it. But if we encounter big things, I can't help. So that they know that they need to bring something that's capable of taking down larger targets. So those are the uh, design principles to keep in mind. Now I'm going to uh, go through and I'm going to design a very simple ship. And I actually kind of decided what I wanted to do uh, before this. And what I want to do is design a very, very simple anti-missile frigate. Because this is a very simple design that I can throw together quickly that I think is emblematic of this mentality. So what we need is we need a way to intercept incoming missiles. So we're going to buy one of those. And that's kind of all we absolutely need. We can actually take two of these. And one thing that I am going to do with this is I'm going to take a reinforced DC locker right here. Uh, reinforced DC locker right there. And that'll give us one restore and a few uh, damage control teams so that if this ship takes a hit, it can repair the damage, and if a critical system goes down, it can restore it. And because this is a reinforced locker, if the reinforced locker gets hit and is reduced to zero, it will need to get hit again before it goes away. Now having done that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, load in a bunch of missiles. I'm not going to take the reposts because I've tested them and they are terrible. I'm going to be taking my own missile, just completely filling it up. And if you look at that, uh, with just this one ship, I'm carrying over 80 missiles to defend an entire fleet, and I can do so pretty well. Uh, but there's still some things that I can do. One of the big things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a missile programming bus array, and this is because that allows me to shoot more missiles at a time, which I have found helps when missile waves are coming in. And if I really wanted to, I could potentially take a scryer. Uh, this would be useful for looking at incoming missiles and determining what their guidance is. And if there are guidance that's really easily spoofed, like say uh, an anti-radiation that's tracking on radar, just turn your radar off, and move out of the way, and it won't hit you. Or if it's awake, maybe stop moving, and it'll probably not hit you. But the problem with this is that this only works for local tracks. And I don't have a particularly good radar on here. I could upgrade the radar to a spyglass, but I don't want to. 
Uh, the reason I don't want to is because this is just for shooting down missiles, and as a result, it doesn't really need to be def detecting threats out beyond about eight kilometers. It just needs to be able to detect missiles out to about a range of, say, three or four kilometers so that it can start engaging them with its own anti-missiles. I could also, if I really wanted to, put on some close range point defense. Uh, I will say that you probably don't want your flax because your flax will probably end up hitting your own missiles that are going out to intercept the other missiles. So I'd probably keep it to the defenders or maybe uh, auroras. Probably the defenders because you're already uh, kind of tight on power if you uh, take a look. One aurora actually doesn't go that far, so you'd have to take two. And then you're looking at that, and you need to go, okay, well, now I need to get more power from somewhere, but there's not a good way to get it, so then you have to go, all right, well, I guess I'm going to get a, uh, oh no, plant control system. And that does it, but now I have to get a birthing. And see, see the problem here? Uh, I, I made one change. I wanted these auroras, and suddenly I need more crew. Oh, that wasn't a birth thing. That was a damage control. I need more crew, and I need more power, and now this ship is significantly more expensive. Uh, it went from 500 points to, you know, 700, almost 800 points. And I really haven't improved it all that much. So, get rid of these. Get rid of the plant control center. And we can even get rid of the birthing. And this is a very, very cheap streamlined craft. If you really wanted to, I could see you putting on a blanket jammer. Uh, and that actually makes a lot of sense because you know what makes it really hard to shoot your ships with missiles? Is not being able to see where your ships are. And you could even, maybe you think this is too much missiles, so you could go like that and make it even cheaper. Look, now it's even cheaper. But I, I really like just this. And so with this, we have a simple ship, costs just above, you know, 600 points, can provide a whole bunch of missile defense for a bunch of other targets. And uh, honestly, in my testing, it does really well. And that's all you need. It doesn't It's not gonna stop every missile that's coming at you, especially not some of the uh, hybrids, but it's gonna stop enough of them. And stopping enough is all you really need. So try to keep that in mind. Hopefully uh, I'll have a, uh, another video in a bit uh, on the missile designer. See you then.